Hey, what time is it where you are? <laughs> I know you're in Niagara Falls. What time is it where you are? One o'clock. No, no, it's noon. No, you didn't change your you didn't change your clock, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Your clock. Yeah, your body. Whatever. Yeah. Your decision. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Okay. Welcome to uh, Standard Time. Welcome to another beautiful day. This is November the 10th, 2021, everyone. This is also episode 45 of season two of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. That would be me. We are fueled by Gales Gas Bars Limited. Always happy to have them on board pushing this program forward. We are supported by Carlo Zucchini and his gang at Performance Heating and Air. And uh, I think out here, speaking of air, whew, I can get rid of that. Also, thank you to Mark Shirk and the gang at Verge Insurance for sponsoring this program, which comes to you live and in living color and audio from Fiddler's Poor House, 149 St. Paul Street in downtown St. Catharines. We are going to be ensconced in their lovely window. Uh, they're not going to let us open it today, though. Oh, I wanted the window open so badly today. It's so nice. We have got a couple of lovely young ladies for you to meet today. They are Niagara girls. They're starring in and, uh, well, appearing in uh, Home Alone 6. Yeah, a movie that uh, comes out tomorrow. So we're going to talk to them and other things coming up. Uh, borders are open, but not really. We'll talk about that. Come on in. We are also, by the way, executively produced and presented by WeStream Niagara's Ontario's Canada's premier live streaming company and we'll tell you more about WeStream as well as the time goes by. Here we are in Fiddlers and we'll be back to fill you in on the rest of the program in uh, about 30 seconds. Cheers. Here we are, special Wednesday edition of Niagara 411 Live. And the reason we are doing a special Wednesday edition is, of course, uh, tomorrow, as the poppy would indicate, is Remembrance Day. And you're going to be busy, I hope, recognizing all of the men and women that uh, made the ultimate sacrifice for you and me to be able to have conversations like this in uh, two world wars as well as many 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 other conflicts around the planet over the course of history so many so many of those conflicts not just the world wars involving citizens of this country Canada and we recognize them tomorrow as of course uh, we should recognize them every day uh, every day but tomorrow is the day November the 11th and uh, meaning that uh, our, our producers of this program, the people that we partner with to, to do this uh, great TV live streaming show every week, we stream, are going to be very, very busy trying to bring Niagara's Remembrance Day recognition ceremonies to you. Kevin Jack, ladies and gentlemen, on the right-hand side of your screen, co-founder of WeStream, along with Brandon Scram. And uh, you guys are going to be busy tomorrow. So fill us in, first of all, before we go anywhere else, on how people can, because it's, it, and I feel for people that aren't as mobile as they would like to be. And for those people, this is almost a, a more important day, because as, uh, as our veterans and our veterans' families get older, it's harder to get around. And uh, this is a perfect time to be able to go online if you know where to go and uh, help remember. Kevin, what's going on tomorrow? Tomorrow we are going to be, we stream that is going to be in two locations, live streaming two different Remembrance Day ceremonies. I will be in Niagara Falls and Niagara Falls will be streaming to both YouTube and Facebook. So tomorrow right here on Niagara 411, um, they'll be carrying live the Remembrance Day ceremony um, from um, the War Memorial and the... Um, Oh gosh, what is it? The um, the cemetery. 
in Niagara Falls. We were there last year. We'll be okay. there again this year. 1045 is when it begins. So again, anybody in Niagara, you could just tune in and watch. If you can't make it out, but you want to remember and you want to see a Remembrance Day ceremony that means a little more to you here at home, tune in to Niagara 411 tomorrow at 1045. And we are also going to be in Port Colborne. They'll be streaming to their YouTube channel. So anybody on the North Shore Lake Erie there, if you want to tune in to a local one for you, Port Colborne on their YouTube channel, both live stream courtesy of WeStream. And that's why we're doing the show today, a very special Wednesday show in downtown St. Catharines and a beautiful one. Uh, look at that. High tomorrow or high today, 15. Is that tomorrow's 15, Friday, 11? Yeah. That's some today we're, days. We're, we're sitting right now at about 11 or 12 degrees. And I, I was lobbying. See how, see, how I'm, see how I'm dressed? This heavy fleece thing on. Uh, a nice uh, cotton t-shirt that says Palm Springs underneath. That's what that says, by the way, Palm Springs. I kind of wish I was there, but anyway. Um, I wore the t-shirt to remind me what it's like in Palm Springs. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but uh, no, we weren't, we weren't opening, the, opening the window today. But what a gorgeous, gorgeous afternoon. We have some bonus weather here in Niagara in November. And tomorrow for Remembrance Day, ceremonies if you are able to show up outside and you want to be outside somewhere to show your um, show your appreciation for uh, sons and daughters of, uh, of Canada that gave the most they could possibly give it'll be a pretty good day for you to get outside you don't have to really bundle up it doesn't look like you're going to have to battle horrible rains or winds or snow flurries or any of those things so it's, uh, it's looking good. Lee, I do want to mention here that uh, tomorrow I will also be remembering um, my grandfather, uh, Robert Henry Paul. He served in both England and Italy. Wow. And uh, so, you know, and I know everybody's, everybody's got a connection, but that's, yeah. that's the one for me. And you saw there currently 11 degrees outdoors, and it's going to be nice yeah. tomorrow for Remembrance Day ceremonies. But if you can't get there, uh, we'll be bringing it to you. Now, uh, Lee, right off the top of the program, there was some craziness going on in Welland yesterday morning at the Tim Hortons drive through I got to tell you, there have been so many comments come up through Niagara 411. By the way, a tip of the beau chapeau to uh, Nick at Niagara 411, all of you that contribute, as well as to Nick's mom. Thank you for being here, because I know you are, as always. However, this, uh, this story came out of Welland, as Kevin mentioned. It was in the parking lot of uh, a Tim Hortons. And the the drivers the passengers the inhabitants if you will occupants of a white pickup truck that you see there were reported to the Niagara Regional Police Service as being apparently um, inebriated or impaired I guess is the proper word these days impaired so the police you're seeing here are trying to stop or block the vehicle well, the fellow in the truck uh, wasn't having any of that and actually pushed the cop's SUV out of the way, did a three-point turn, and, and left. <laughs> then the police are following. They're wondering, okay, what the hell do we do now? How, how are we, we going to do this? They broke off the so-called pursuit because, as you can appreciate... They're always concerned with in any sort of pursuit, especially if uh, the the one they're pursuing is expected of being impaired or whatever. You don't want to cause any more risk to citizenry than you have to. But knowing absolutely nothing about policing, and I, I know this right off the bat, so I, I will not pass any comment. How how does that guy get away? I mean. There's a, there's a big SUV behind him. There are SUVs all around. Um, police officers have, dare I say it, guns and, and batons and things, but I guess that falls into their training. If you're in a situation like this, this is how you, how you handle it to minimize the threat to the public. And look. Is that even possible in our world? Apparently, it is. <laughs> and it's not even screeching away. He even hits, he even touches the brake to check the cross street to make sure everything's okay. And off he goes. Now, uh, the update at this point in time, Kevin, are they still, 
I, I saw a note saying that it, it, it appeared they were still looking for these people. Well, here's the uh, NRP update because uh, Nick had this video at around you know 7.30 yesterday morning, and then uh, later on in the day, the NRP released a, an official release to, to coincide with what happened. Officers attended a fast food restaurant in the area of King Street in Kent in Wellen. Officers had received reports that a white GMC Sierra pickup truck was parked in the parking lot and the driver passenger were displaying physical signs of being impaired, as I mentioned before. Also determined the truck was stolen on top of everything else. Officers located the truck in the area of uh, Prince Charles Drive, Lincoln Street. Truck parked in a parking lot of a different fast food restaurant. These guys like uh, fast food. Officer on scene blocked the truck in. Truck rammed the fully marked cruiser, forced its way out of the lot, which is what we saw. Officers very quickly dis discontinued pursuit out of concern for public safety. Truck last seen heading west on Lincoln Street near Riverside Drive. No officers were injured. Minor damage to the cop car. Anyone who may have information, etc., is asked to. So, those all of these cruisers, lights, flashing, SUVs, high-powered law enforcement vehicles, and a GMC Sierra, and he just drives away? I am sorry, um, local constabulary, but if your hands are tied, if something happens that a police procedure tells you that you can't stop this person and use force, it seems something's wrong with, with how we approach these situations. I'm not blaming the officers. They were, I guess, following protocols. Now, see, he's spinning his tires there. The truck can't move. He's spinning his tires. He has to go forward in order to then... Then the car, then the cop car moves forward. Then the truck comes back, and now he's in gear, and he's all-wheel drive or whatever the hell it was, and uh, pushes, pushes the cruiser out of the way and drives away. Kevin, I am without speech, as George Costanza would say. I, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, how does that guy get away? Like, everything how I've known about... How does he get away? But again, like I said, not, not to those officers. Maybe there's other circumstances that we yeah. don't understand. But no. if I was in a situation like that, I'd think I'm cooked. And then if I say, well, I'm going to flee, then I'm even more fried. And to sit there and say we're still looking for the vehicle is goes against everything I thought about uh, about what happens if you're on the wrong side of the law. Like, you're going to get busted. They got you. You're cornered in the Tim Hortons parking lot right there in Prince Charles. I have been in situations, not where I have necessarily been the one that's going to get arrested or anything, but I have been in situations where, okay, uh, if I drive away, they, they're they going to want to talk to me. So I just, I just stay. Yeah. I just stop. And if I have done something wrong, I know I'd be so damn scared, I wouldn't be able to drive the truck anyway. I just, hands up, I give. <laughs> it's, Uncle. You see that video and you don't think that ends with, we're still looking for him. How does that happen? What, what do you mean you're still looking for him? Shouldn't it be like the O.J. Simpson white Bronco? <laughs> I mean, we stream, followed, coming to you live from the Niagara Parkway. We're following this guy. We don't know where he's going to end up. But he's going to run out of gas sooner or later. Deploy the drones. I don't know if it's OJ in there, but we're going to follow until he stops. <laughs> How do you lose him? Now, maybe they were afraid that if they continued to follow, he would escalate speed. And if he was impaired, cause damage or whatever, and they're afraid of people getting hurt. And then, then it comes back on the cop saying, why did you chase this person? Because you can't win that one. Why don't they just go over to the uh, Tim Hortons on East Main by CTFS? He was probably there. <laughs> I mean, Jeez. the guy obviously was spotted in one fast food joint, went to another one. There's always another Timmy's around the corner. That's where he went. Guy needed his double-double. I don't know, Kev. Hey, uh, Lee, maybe the next guy. You know the show is open to everybody. Uh, all you have to do is click on the Zoom link. Yeah. And uh, Phil has jumped in again. He's from Welland. Awesome. Um, he had a little walk around last night that he went live on Facebook. Maybe he'll, maybe he'll talk a little bit about that. Or all maybe, right, cool. This maybe is great. Knows. Yeah. Phil, how are you? Good afternoon. I'm well. Yourself? Uh, I'm I'm well as well. Uh, you've been on this program before, have you not? You know, I'd like to say that I, I guess I'm trying to become a regular here. Well, no, that's okay. Uh, we I'm just I'm just kind of missing the Rex hat, but <laughs> that's right. That's right. I had to put it up on the shelf. Yeah, so sure you clean. you came on without the Rex hat, so you look like somebody else. <laughs> but that, actually, you, you don't have. 
You don't have to be somebody else. You're more than welcome, Phil, uh, to, to come on any time. What's on your mind today? You know what? I like where you were just talking. I like where you were just talking about uh, yesterday's incident in Welland with yeah. a stolen or with a truck. And what I heard was an intoxicated driver. And I am absolutely blown away at the fact that first thing in the morning with three, two or three cruisers nearly blocking them in, this guy just drives away and they're still looking for him. Yes. It, it, it really bothers me because if he wouldn't have said, uh, like, like you noticed, if he wouldn't have been so cautious and would have been uh, heavy on the right foot, what if, and I, let's not get caught up in what ifs, but what if somebody got seriously injured down the way at an intersection, uh, roll over into a house? Well, I'm it's, uh, speeding's really been an issue in Welland. Yeah, and I'm just surprised that this was the outcome. As I said, as I, as I mentioned before, and you mentioned someone getting hurt, I am sure that is behind the actions that the police officers on the scene took, is they wanted to do their level best to not escalate the situation to the point where it got more dangerous for, for citizens. That being, and I understand that, but that being said, if we put so many restrictions on our police officers as far as procedure in situations like yeah. this. How are we, how do we expect them to protect us? I mean, there's a vehicle where two people were expected to be impaired and they let it out of the parking lot onto the public streets. How does that happen? How does that happen? You say that exactly right with what officers have to deal with in respect to procedure. I feel sorry and for them. In respect to avoiding injury, uh, in so many cases, not just in fleeing vehicles, our enforcement agencies' hands are really tied in many ways. Yeah. And it's scary with what's like these, happening here in Niagara. These constables go back into the station house or whatever, and I'm just, I'm just making this stuff up. But imagine you walk in, I. I got a bulletproof vest, I got a gun, I got a big fast car, I got a baton, and I got, a, I got backup, and there's like six of me in the parking lot. Why do, we, why do we let these guys go again? Right, I'd rather end it in the parking lot. I'd rather end it in the parking lot and ding a quarter panel to make sure that the guy doesn't go anywhere. But then again, we have to respect the police officer's decisions. And, uh, well, they're making decisions based on their training and based on the right. mandates by which they're supposed to handle situations like that. I get it. Mm -hmm. but, but should mm -hmm. those mandates be changed is, is my question. Interesting question. And that, I guess, we'll have to leave up to the higher power that be. Yeah. Phil, how's, uh, how are everything else? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to think of you now as our Welland at Large correspondent. How are things going in the Rose City these days? How, how, is the, how is that charity event that you were talking about? You know what? Beyond the Streets Welland has yeah. partnered up with Holy Trinity Church mm -hmm. on Division Street in Welland. There's an excellent gentleman named Jim. I'm hoping in the future I can introduce you guys to, as well as the whole rest of Niagara, because they truly are doing the Lord's work by helping those in need. And despite from growth, business, jobs more plentiful than ever before in Welland. I was looking forward to the end of this show and I really hope uh, I really hope the owner of Tailgate's Bar comes on to your show well, and has a conversation. Uh, but I was yeah. really really surprised. I'm not, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure what I what I took from your looking forward to the end of the show. But <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> uh, maybe I can maybe I can clarify a little bit on that, Phil. Yeah, let's that, do, um, let's talk the tailgates thing, Kevin. So tailgates, all of a sudden, when did when did uh, we learn that they changed the locks and Ryan and the staff were just locked out? Was that Monday, Phil? I, I believe that'd be correct. That was just. Can uh, I rewind and 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 let the folks know that aren't aware of what tailgates is? It's a it's a freaking institution, is what I it know, is. and well, and I know, but there are others out there that might not <laughs> be aware of it. Phil, so why, why don't you tell us? Give us the background of Tailgates, Phil. So, Tailgates is a bar and grill, an excellent eatery, an entertainment venue, and an overall go-to place for anybody in Wellet. Before Tailgates, it was known as the Elbow Room. And um, talk about a place that's located in the Fitch Street Plaza yep. that has absolutely been a staple in town. I think everybody in Wellet was shocked to see the doors were locked and... Uh, 
uh, sheriff's notice been put on the door saying that the place had been closed over a debt of over a thousand hundred thousand dollars and at first everybody was wondering why and how you know was it behind on rent and after digging into it a little bit last night and actually speaking to the owner himself he enlightened me that this is a neglectful this is a landlord who maintains the property at fifth street which has had a terrible history from a destroyed parking lot to just overall neglect in the uh, in the rental units and other storefronts. It turns out that at Tailgate's restaurant, what had happened is the roof was leaking and the roof had been leaking. And long story short, there's going to be quite a dispute over this closure. I'm really hoping that everybody takes a look, reaches out, and actually gets a chance today on your show to hear Ryan Nava speak about what happened exactly and what's going to be happening moving forward. Okay. But all I've heard at the end of the day is another property owner is dealing with a darn good tenant. Yeah, and uh, Phil, I'm just going to interject here. Yeah, uh, please you, do, Kevin. Give you went out last night, and we're live on Facebook, and I'm showing that now so people can see you standing in front of tailgates. We did speak to Ryan today, and unfortunately, Ryan spoke to lawyers, and what do lawyers always tell you? Don't say say nothing. I yeah. always believe that uh, the truth will set you free, and you can never put yourself in a bad position by telling the truth. Um, but I That's totally right. understand following lawyers' advice in this situation. The thing that completely sucks for him is how long can you be shut down before your business is dead it's already been shut down long enough because of the whole COVID thing now now that you can actually do something we still can't do anything. but what can you go a week or two weeks and then all of his employees as well they have to find other employment so even if this lasts two weeks and he gets back in he may not have, have nobody to work for look at that shot it's and a what satellite what office it of uh, uh <laughs> it's a satellite office of niagara 411 live with lee Sterry. there's a that's my second location <laughs> show the uh the phone booth in front of tailgates the phone booth yeah, wow! Who knew? I've expanded. So here they're showing the they're showing the thing that's on the door there, Phil. What does it say on yep. that notice on the door? Because it's my understanding that what's on the door is actually uh, the cost of repairing the roof, which the landlord would be responsible for, not tailgates. Now this this is exactly it. It says one hundred and six thousand dollars, but it doesn't say exactly for which area of uh, of cost. So at the end of the day, if this business is closed. Uh, a business owner and the staff, so the whole team. If all that, all that uh, business is lost, if all those wages are lost, and then in the end of say civil lit litigation, if it goes that way, what if at the end of it the ruling is that it was wrongdoing? But the, but, but now it's months down the road. Isn't that sickening? It's a, well, it's it's asinine because this is nothing more than a building repair this is a yes. building repair and building Which repair to fall on the owners building Bonus. repairs are well whatever the what, whatever the agreement of occupancy is between the occupant and the owner of the property whatever it states in their agreement those are the people that should pay for the repair if a repair is required it's pretty basic stuff i mean this is not as my son would say this is not rocket surgery or brain science it's just everyday contractual law. It doesn't make sense to me. Correct, and I hope we find the truth at the end of the day. And uh, before I run, I just wanted to say thanks again for bringing these topics and allowing Niagara to come together on Niagara 411's well, live show. Well, we're we're happy to do it, Phil. Uh, and, and and if you want, if I if Nate, I want need to make up a badge or or something, maybe that's what we should do, Kevin. Make up some sort of deputy badges or something for uh, our Welland correspondent. Um, you get the job if you want it. So, and you I know what, I, sir? I'll take the I'll take the conditions. Okay, I have to I have to say though, we're not going to meet minimum wage standards for a while. Understood. Understood. <laughs> I'm right, a community Phil, I, volunteer, so I'll volunteer the, the first bit, and then you let me know when you're ready. All right, Phil, when, uh, when, when it's worth a million bucks to you, we'll let you know. <laughs> All the best in your day, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Everybody in Niagara, hope the week goes well. Thank you, Phil. Phil Gladman. Um,
Gladman, that's his last name. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was uh, the original starter, the original guy behind uh, Welland Float Fest. Yeah. See his name on that. Oh, he's giving me the shh. Maybe, maybe we don't talk about that. Um, but yeah, he was the original guy. Had the whole idea, started the whole thing, the groundswell. So, uh, and, and, and where we can really use Phil as a poster child, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, is it's that easy for you to update us about what's happening in your neighborhood and, and in your municipality, in your city, to talk about whatever you feel is important to you. And you will notice on the bottom of your screen there, it says click the Zoom link in the post. If you would like to come on and do what Phil just did, talk about something that's important to you or you think should be important to us that you're aware of that we're not talking about, uh, or something we are talking about that you'd like to comment on, or tell us we're uh, full of hooey, uh, or, or, or whatever it is you want to do. That's what you do. You click that link and you come on. It's an open show. It is live. We have no sacred cows here. We're not any particular uh, political stripe. Um, we, we love everybody and hate no one, or we either hate everybody and love no one. It just depends on how the day works out, you know? Um, and that was a bit facetious. We don't hate anybody, really. Uh, <laughs> I don't anyway. I'm t I'm t I've been around the sun too many times to worry about hating things. I, I have no time or energy for that anymore. Hate's it's a pretty just, powerful word. Hate is a, you know, hate, you're right about that. When uh, I used that word many, many years ago to a boss of mine, and I was just a kid, he said, oh, I hate it when that happens. He said, do you really, do you really hate it? Or is it just a little bit awkward? Is it something you're just not comfortable with? Because hate, hate is a really strong word. So I do whatever I can. Uh, and I, I learned a lesson then as a young, uh, young person that had a mentor in, uh, in my life. And, uh, and I thought about that always. I, I, try to, I try to veer away from that word because that word is, is a very powerful word. And it is often misused and overused. And uh, hopefully we can eliminate the need to use it at all, ever. So that's my, I guess, pre-Remembrance Day rant about that word. Um, so, Kev. So speaking of Remembrance Day, Nick put up uh, this little video on Niagara 411 about the Lancaster, um, the Avro Arrow. Yes. If that's where it's going to be, or the Lancaster, or whatever. So I don't want to say the, the Avro Arrow. You can't oh, put Lancaster God. and Avro Arrow yeah, in the same sentence. God, I can't believe I said that. Why did I you do that? that? I can't believe I said that. <laughs> Canadian War Plain Heritage Museum. It's a great spot if you've never been, by all means. Go. You can track the Lancaster's route in real time on flightradar24.com. It'll take off at 10 a.m. tomorrow. The D-Day Dakota will be following the Lancaster this year. Details on this year's virtual Remembrance Day service at that link. So check it out on Niagara 411. So here's a little video that I think is um, just kind of tracing the route that they plan on taking tomorrow. Yeah. So it looks like they're kind of circling in the uh, Hamilton-Burlington area, then bang, fly right down. I'd say it goes to Welland. Then, oh, hits, then hits Niagara Falls. It looks like it's over to Dunville. If you're anywhere outside or with an open window, you won't miss it. That's for sure. But uh, we'll be getting the flyover in Niagara Falls. And again, we'll be carrying that ceremony for you live on Niagara 411 at uh, 1045 a.m. tomorrow morning. Absolutely. And this is our special Wednesday edition of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. We are powered by WeStream who will be bringing you all of those Remembrance Day ceremonies as often uh, uh, wherever they can, as long as their resources will allow them to. Uh, we are fueled by Gales Gas Bars Limited, as always, and we appreciate their support. Gales.ca. We were talking last week about how simple websites and or emails should be, and that's about as simple as it gets. Check out all the benefits that you can get by using their services. Gales.ca is the place to go. Performance Heating and Air, Carlos, uh, Carlos Zucchini and uh, all of his crew. And we see trucks all over the place and service vans, etc. People getting geared up for winter to make sure that all of their HVAC systems are in trim 
for uh, what we know is on the way climate-wise here in the Niagara Peninsula. Performance heating and air, saving your family money on HVAC systems and procedures and bills because they have families here in Niagara as well. Verge Insurance Group, uh, Mark and Blake Shirk and uh, the gang, again another Niagara born and bred company. We always thank these people for their support. And um, I might mention this um, right now, we have rotating sponsors from time to time and uh, occasionally businesses reevaluate what they're doing and they go through business planning and they go through things that are uh, involved in planning their business futures and every now and then uh, an opening presents itself, not very often I might add, uh, but an opening presents itself for sponsorship. We have one that is available. Um, Kevin and I didn't even talk about talking about this, but I just thought I'd throw it up there. Uh, and, and, and if you see that, uh, you see this thing, it's, it's uh, right, prime, up, right prime up, location, right, 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 right up over, there, right on right top, top of there. your head, right up there, right up there, right up, right up there, right up there. there see you that? Go. Right there. Yep, that's where it is. That's that's where it is. That could be you. All right, uh, because we have a space. We don't load this program up uh, and this production up. We're not like NASCAR. We don't, we don't load it up with uh, logos and, and messages and uh, commercial breaks and like all, all this other stuff to get in the way of what we're trying to do. So we have a limited number of spots available. That spot I just pointed to is, uh, is available if you're interested. And uh, here, here, here's the line I love. And you better get in touch with us because they're going fast. <laughs> they're going fast. Anyway, um, Kevin, coming up. At uh, 1 o'clock, I did want to mention this. I wanted to give this a, a, another pre-promo because these two young ladies are soon to be Niagara stars, heroes, celebrities, pick an adjective. And their names are Thendika, and I, I really hope I'm pronouncing their names right. They'll correct me when I talk to them if I'm not. Thendika and Zyanda. That's how I'm going to pronounce their names because that's how they're spelled phonetically for me. And, Gosh, I hope I got it right, girls. But these two young ladies are uh, from Niagara Falls. They landed parts in a movie that is going to be released day after tomorrow, Home Alone 6. Remember Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone 1? Well, set the world on fire and obviously became a very successful movie franchise. Well, they're now up to Home Alone 6. And these two young ladies, both of them, at the ages of, uh, what, Kevin, 12 and 11? Yeah. Have landed parts in the movie. And they are both. These uh, two lovely girls are going to be joining us on the program to talk about this at about uh, 1 o'clock today, in the, in the 1 o'clock-ish form of, uh, of the program. Here, Ali, and let's just uh, take a peek here at the trailer for the movie. Now, okay. again, they're not the stars of the show, but I'm interested to see whether or not they make it into, uh, into the movie trailer. Sure. So let's, uh, let's take a peek at this guy. I guess I can... And the fun was in full swing. You have split our family onto two separate flights. Mom! Max, please! The family left for their big vacation. Is that everyone? The cars are leaving now! But forgot one little thing mom dad <laughs> uncle blake they don't even know i'm here they don't even know i'm here they are english in this my mom and dad have gone to tokyo I'm yes they got to oh, tokyo why right. am i here you're saying though like how why many am i here how many times has this really happened yeah until you get it like can't families remember their kids? This is the sixth time a family has left their kid home alone at Christmas. How does this happen? Family and Children's Services should be involved here. This is way too many times. Well, maybe you can ask the girls about it when they come on. <laughs> now listen, girls, did you ask the producers how do they keep forgetting the kids at home? And just so you know, if you do do that, there's a good chance that there's burglars. Burglars. Oh, yeah. You're going to get burgled. I'll but tell you, though, as a... Kevin, you gotta, you, you got to know that, I mean, filmmakers love this stuff because they, they get this one movie 
and it absolutely blows the doors off financially. They spend ten dollars to make it and make millions uh, on the back end. So they got okay. We got to do this again because this is this is like a this is like a golden cash cow we have here. I'll and tell they you, just keep making them. As a as a father to a, a six and a seven year old, soon to be eight year old, um, they love Home Alone. Oh, the, yeah. The pranks and the hijinks, like, absolutely love it. We can go back and, and show them the original Macaulay Culkin, and yeah. it's the best thing they've ever seen. But, but Because it's one of them winning yeah. against the adults. It's, it's a kid adults. taking on the adults, and the kid wins. Excuse me, child. They're not kids. They're child. They're children. But anyway. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's again, it's the underdog beats the, beats the big dog. But... Thandika and Zyanda, and again, I hope I got the names right, will be, uh, if all goes according to plan, fingers and eyes crossed, will be joining us around 1 o'clock today. What time is it, Kevin? We're heading there. Uh, a number of things have happened uh, over the course of the week. The big one was that, uh, that video pickup. That, that's that's got to be just the, the craziest. Uh, we, changed, we changed our clocks. As I alluded to when I was leaving the office down the street, um, one, of the, one of the cool lines that came out uh, while Kevin and I were chatting is, uh, my clock, my decision. <laughs> uh, my clock, my choice. My clock, my choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, uh, like the, the old uh, vaccine thing, right? Yeah, my body, my choice. So. <laughs> Government, you're telling me to move my clocks one hour back? My clock, my choice. Now, Lee, let me go as an, uh, on an aside here and waste two minutes of the program by saying that um, every year I talk about this, and I don't know why it hasn't happened. You talk about movie plots. Why has a movie plot never centered around the fact that when we set our, our time back, we can be two places at the same time? Ah, uh, time shifting. Well, 1.30 a.m. this past Sunday morning actually occurred twice. It was one yes. thirty. It got till two. Then we set it back to one again. Yes, it did because the actual. Uh, now that you mention it, uh, that's interesting. Um, this sounds like a Star Trek thing. Oh, the, oh, uh, where no man has gone before, and show up at make no like it's 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 kind uh, of wrapping your head around a uh, time warp thing, uh, because the actual technical time where the clocks change is two a.m. Sunday. That's right. the actual time that you're supposed to. To switch, but most of us are asleep, so you either change it before you go to bed or when you get up in the morning. But the actual time is 2 a.m., so you're right. Anything between 1.30 and 2 sort of happens twice. So why has that never been at the core? Like, I've always thought if, um, let's say I was plotting to commit a crime, a right. big crime, you know, uh, robbing a bank or and something a, like that. And there's a time lock on the, on the safe. Assuming, yeah, assuming that I planned everything else to try and get away with it, why wouldn't then I also time my heist at 1.30 a.m.? Kevin, this sounds like a plot for Ocean's 111. It does, doesn't it? Yes. No, officer, because you could see, was that clock calibrated? You could see I was clearly in two places at 1.30. Uh, they say I was there, yet I, I was have, over here. I have a receipt from another store saying that I was here at 1.30. They went that away. <laughs> I've seen uh, I've seen thinner plots. Yes, absolutely, very good. Uh, the other thing uh, is that happened this past week, and uh, feel free to comment on this. Is uh, I call it we're now playing the hunky funky border blues. The borders opened to vehicular Canadian traffic on Monday, two days ago at midnight Monday. But did they really open? My argument would be, no, they didn't really open. Because you got to have a, a test in order, a, a, a negative test result in order to return to Canada if you have been outside the country, even for two hours. You have to have a test that proves you're negative. Well, this is not opening the borders, is it? This is my little rant of the day. This isn't opening the borders. And we saw news reports, if you were looking at uh, some of the major news networks, uh, e online and otherwise, over the, 
over the course of uh, last week is the fact that all of the mayors, I mean, Dio Dottie in, uh, in Niagara Falls, the mayor of uh, Windsor, uh, mayor in, in Quebec, another one in Montreal, uh, uh, Asuyas out in British Columbia into Washington State. There are a number of land border um, crosses that depend on tourism for, for commerce, for livelihood, for successful business. And the American business they're dying to have the Canadians back. But it's not doing any good, because I'm telling you, I'm not going over there and then pay $200 to get a PCR test or whatever the hell you need to come back into the country uh, within 72 hours or within two hours or whatever it is. It hasn't changed a damn thing. Nothing has changed. So, and so it's, gone a little it's gone a little far, in my humble opinion. So Americans can come to Canada and only show their proof of vaccination. Correct. We can go to the States by showing our proof of vaccination. Correct. But Canadians, to come back into our own country, must then go a step further and have and a have negative PCR test Correct. within 72 hours yes. of you. So Americans can wake up today and say, I feel like going to Canada. But and they can, can do that. But Canadians can't go over there and come back on the same whim. Right. We have to have a and it's going to cost us. Okay. I've been singing the Canadian American Border Blues, baby. I don't know anybody that's going. Do you know anybody that's going? No. I, I knew one person that was thinking about it. Then when they looked into the PCR test and the associated costs, Actu it didn't make sense. Actually, though, the, there, there is a category of people that will take advantage of this, and I don't blame them at all, are those people that have relationships and or family on the other side of the border. And snowbirds. Well, snowbirds, that's a whole thing, because they, they don't care. They, they want their car. They go, they go down, and they've got three months to get a test before they right. come back. So that's kind of that's kind of a whole, but, but the category, the, sh the short-term visit category, are those people that have family, uh, especially those that have, uh, I read a, fellow, a story the other day about a fellow from Welland whose fiance lives in Buffalo. And they're just thrilled the fact that next week he, they're going to be able to reunite for a couple of days before he has to come back and go back to work here in Ontario. But they can at least see each other that they haven't been able to do for the last 18 months. So those categories, yeah, you have a fiancé, you have a close family, you got a mom or a dad or somebody like that. And, uh, and yeah, my, it, it probably makes that $200 worthwhile but for us for me to go on over to buy a turkey and get a tank of gas no thanks why bother we have a casino over here we don't need to go to yours <laughs> went to the casino saturday night did you yep our which casino the the the, Niagara, uh, the, the new one yeah the new one um the new er one we didn't go in we were about 10 to 15 minutes in that line and aborted mission Oh, really? I said, what do I need to go in there for, yeah. really? And, uh, so I ended up across the road at uh, TGI Fridays. Who knew? You know what they said? There's two TGI Fridays in all of Canada, and they're across the road from each other. <laughs> and they're both in Niagara Falls. Yeah, well. But ended up there. Makes you wonder about the franchise in general. We were looking for some live entertainment or something like that, yeah. right? And wasn't much doing at the casino. And, uh, and, and Mayor of Niagara Falls, uh, Jim Diodaddy, and, and, and again, not making this political, don't, don't give a hoot about politics. It's the fact that he is the mayor. And he's rightfully pissed, and I don't blame him. As is the mayor of Windsor and uh, Quebec and Montreal and all these other places that have land border crossings with the United States of America. Um, it does nothing. Making these grand uh, pseudo gestures of opening the borders does absolutely nothing. As long as that regulation stays in place. Nothing. Accomplishes zero. That's such my a, rant. Such a Canadian thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. It does seem Here like it a, is, but well, we have to be careful. Yeah. Here's what you want, but not really uh, what you we want. We have to be careful. We have to be small C conservative about this. Um, Lee, yesterday afternoon, speaking of the falls, yeah. Highway 420, which is that little that, oh, that, yeah, that, like yeah, extension. Yeah. That, uh, is that the Veterans Parkway now? Is that what they've changed? I think that's what they call it. Yeah. Um, and that'll be, you know, at, at the core of the Remembrance Day ceremony that they'll be carrying on Niagara 401 sure. Live tomorrow, yeah. beginning yeah. at 1045. But uh, 
They pulled over the school bus yesterday afternoon. You know, we were talking earlier about the Niagara Regional Police Service officers, and God bless them, they must have some stories at the end of the day. Like, the, the, I, I don't know who the constable was, who the officers were that pulled over this stool, school bus, but at the end of the day, don't you think they probably walked into the, the, the cop shop, as we used to call them, and say, what the hell is going on out there? So, OPP, uh, just stop this bus for speeding on Highway 420 in Niagara Falls. Okay, so, first of all, Highway 420 in Niagara Falls, is that not like 80 kilometers an hour through there? And then it does come down to like 60 right in around the intersection. Of when stopping the vehicle, okay, let me back up. My question, first of all, is how fast is too fast for a school bus? Like, at what speed does a school bus have to be going before a police officer stops it? All right, so that's, th that's the other question mark that's thrown in the air. When stopping the vehicle, the driver stopped in a live lane initially. Have you ever been pulled over by a cop, Kev? Yeah, I've been pulled uh, over. Okay, what do you do? Uh, slow down and move over to the shoulder. The Put your four-way flashers on, move over, get out of the way. They pull in behind you, then you have a conversation about whatever the hell it is. Not this guy. Now, actually, we don't know it was a guy. It could have been a woman. We don't. <laughs> the driver stopped in a live lane initially and had to be directed where to stop safely. No, you can't stop in the lane. Move over there. Uh, there were no children on board. Now, I would like to think, and I believe wholeheartedly, that the driver of the school bus would have been behaving differently had there been children in their care on the bus. But, nevertheless, A, the bus was speeding. I've never seen a school bus pulled over for speeding. So it had to be going at a pretty good clip. And B, stops in the middle of the, of the driving lane before the cop says, move it over, buddy. We are not sure of the results of this. Might I suggest that, um, and I apologize if you're the driver watching this, might I suggest that you take up another occupation? Uh, I, I, don't, I think you may have lost the trust of the parent of the children whom you transport from point A to B on a regular basis. I think maybe the trust is damaged a little bit. I would, uh, I would hope that the, uh, the employer would make that decision rather easy for them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I'm doing, this is not Niagara based except un unless you're actually fans of the Buffalo Bills and you live here in, uh, in Niagara Falls uh, or the Niagara region. Uh, yeah. Well, this is Bill's country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I speak now to the entire league. Uh, and what I am doing right now is I'm starting a hiring campaign for anyone that would like to officiate in the NFL that can actually see, hear, and understand what happens uh, in front of their eyes to apply for a job, volunteer or otherwise, as an official for the NFL. Because it is very apparent that they are scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to any sort of officials for uh, NFL football games. Uh, in the United States of America or elsewhere, there's a sad lack of skill and talent uh, in that in, in that genre. So uh, uh, please apply. Uh, we're we're in desperate need of intelligent people to officiate NFL football games. Uh, Lee, where do you want to go here? We've got the uh, we got the sisters, the Home Alone sisters. Oh, you mean I'm done now? No, they're about ten minutes from now. Okay. Um, we've got uh, Jordan Pizza. We can give that update as there was a break in out there, or we could also update the. Uh, the ATV kids that tore up the park in Niagara Falls. Let's do that first because okay. that's, a, that's a reminder of a, of a last week thing. So I like to update things that we've done before. So let's do this. Two district detectives. You remember the story, first of all, about uh, there was one, uh, one young person on a, uh, on a, on a bike, on a, on a trail bike, and, uh, and another one in a quad. And they absolutely destroyed there they are. Absolutely destroyed uh, a baseball park. Okay. 
And th these are some of the shots that we used. There you go. Before. All right. So, so that's what it looked like. So we have an update on this story. Two district detectives have been investigating the incident. As a result of that investigation, the suspects, the hardened criminals, have been identified. The investigation remains open and ongoing. There have not been any arrests. <laughs> detectives would like to thank the public and media for their support, anyone with information, etc. What does that mean, though? They've been identified. What do they do? They, they witnessed a parental spanking? What? <laughs> what happened to the... No arrests. We can't arrest these kids. We can't throw them in the tank. We know who they are. Uh, but this is, uh, this is how our media release has to... Members of the public who wish to provide information. Well, what information can they provide? Now, we already, who, we you, already know who they are. You got them. We already know who they are. Mom and dad are looking after it. Hope so. A public spanking will be held in... <laughs> Where does that happen? In the city square? Yeah, the Chippewa Square there, right outside the riverside. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spank them in now, front of kinda, everybody. What's well, kind of weird, though, to read that and say, okay, we've identified the guys. No arrests have been made. And we're still investigating. Yeah, and it's still Why? on. I could see no arrests have been made because they were 12 years old or, or whatever it was, or we couldn't actually charge them with anything. Yeah, but anything. tell us why. But to say that the uh, the investigation is ongoing is like, well, what, yeah. what more is there? Yes. A public grounding will take place <laughs> with the parents in attendance at a news conference. <laughs> no uh. video games for a week. The, the, the bike and the quad will be impounded and uh, locked to the... <laughs> what? Now, one wonders... See, but this is the information we should have. So they did, the, they, they did the deed. They did the dastardly deed. The kids will obviously suffer some slings and arrows of outrageous fortune uh, because of this. But now, uh, are the parents... Are the families, are the kids, are the whoever going to be held responsible for returning the property to its original condition? Will they be financially on the hook for any of this? Or will it be a fine and then the taxpayers on the... We, there's so much to this story we don't know. Yeah, estimated damage was ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. There's been a lot of comments. People saying, "Ah, what do you mean ten thousand dollars?" I also saw some comments in there from people I know that own landscaping companies saying, "Oh no, that's at least ten thousand. Like, let's start at ten thousand and go up from there." So people saying, "No, no, in the industry, yeah, there's ten thousand dollars." Oh, at least there. I would say at least that. <laughs> Tore it right up. A public spanking will be held. All right. <laughs> Sorry, so it's my Monty Python sort of sense of humor kicking in. All right, and then let uh, the spankings begin. <laughs> it's very Monty Python. Oh God, stone him! All right, the Good Samaritan Dog Rescue. Oh, the Good I, Samaritan Dog Rescue. I, okay. Oh yeah, that's okay. We'll do Jordan Pizza. Okay. Uh, Jordan Pizza uh, broken into last night. Please share in hopes we can catch this thief. They will be open today. So let's all order dinner tonight to show our support. That's a cool marketing campaign. Everybody order from Jordan Pizza. This is cool. <laughs> it's, like um, it's an inside job. This is just all part of a, ma a marketing campaign. I know, but once again, it's somebody that goes in uh, in a hazmat suit thinking they're going to be able to get away with uh, taking something. And again, I say, what sort of mental midget are you that you think you're going to get something worthwhile from robbing a pizza parlor? in Jordan. How much can you... It's, it isn't like Ocean's Eleven where you're going in for millions. It's Jordan Pizza, for heaven's sake. We hope he'll be caught. They have obtained video from surrounding businesses and homes, and I'm sure this person, somebody knows what's going on, and I guess there are desperate people in the world, and the reason they do this is they need something from somebody that they can't get themselves and there's someone there obviously that does not want to be identified and at least god bless them they had the sense to cover up at least they're not like totally stupid are you talking because of the robbery or because of covid either or okay i mean it's a twofer isn't it 
you're covered up and you're not going to catch a disease, you cover it up and they're not going to catch you. So I guess it's a twofer. But what do you get from Jordan Pizza at 1040 at night when it's closed? You're not going to walk away with a sack of cash, are you? I don't think so. All you do is cause trouble for people, uh, good small business people like those that own and run Jordan Pizza. All you do is inconvenience their lives and, and make trouble for them. And that's not what small business people need. They, they don't need this stuff. They don't need any more trouble than they've already had over the last couple of years. Yeah, good people over there at Jordan Pizza. Yeah, good folks. It's uh, out my neck of the woods, and uh, we've ordered from them on occasion, and they're always uh, very pleasant, greeted with a smile when you go in the door, happy to help them out. One of the, one of the things that was in the news today, too, and um, the, the vaccination debate continues to get more and more complex as, as time goes by. I already talked about the, uh, the border thing that, that isn't, the border opening that never happened, um, which is where we are right now. Um, but I heard a news report today, and uh, it was all, oh, well, we may have to, the Ford government may have to rethink the uh, restriction protocols for COVID-19 activity in the province of Ontario, because one of the indicators is the fact that the numbers for first doses have gone down. All right, Kev, help me out with the math here. <laughs> If you've got 80 some odd percent, and I think that's where we are in the province of Ontario right now, if you got about 80 plus percent, give or take a percentage point or two, that are fully vaccinated, would it be a surprise to you to hear that the numbers of first vaccinations have gone down? I hope that number continues to go down. Doesn't that sort of come along with the territory of being fully vaxxed because there are now fewer people that need to be vaxxed for the first time? Why is this a surprise? I don't understand. I don't, I do not understand. Are some of these medical people just trying to look for job security? I don't get it. And I know I'm starting to sound like an anti-vaxxer now, and I it was never one of those. But there's just, there are, the, like, two, two plus two is equal in five here, and I'm not, I'm not figuring out why. <laughs> Jesus. I know. I know I'm in a ranty mood today. I don't know why. It's a beautiful sunny day in November. It's a 10th of November. It's a beautiful day. Uh, maybe it's because you're keeping me off the golf course, Kevin. I don't know why, but... I just, there, there are just things, there are just so many things that are, dare I say it, pissing me off these days. Well, Lee, let's, uh, let's put you in a good mood because we've got our Do we have stars. our girls? Yeah, the girls are here. Awesome. So, so I'll, I'll bring them on now and uh, I'll let you uh, say hi to the sisters. This is wonderful. This is going to put me in a bit. Hello, girls. How are you? Good, you? I am terrific now because I'm looking at you. Okay, now, first of all, let me get this out of the way. Um, pronounce your names correctly for me. Do I have Thandika right? Thandika. Thandika? Yep. Okay. And that's you uh, in, in, the, in the yellow shirt? Yep. All right. And Zyanda, is that correct? Zyanda. Zyanda. All right. I will not make that mistake again. So um, you're pretty close in age. What, 112, 111? Yep, yep. All right. So... And you guys, you, you girls, are, are in a movie that is, going yes. to be, that is going to be released the day after tomorrow. It's Home Alone 6. It's a Disney production. This is a big deal. How did you, t and you guys can tell it in your own words, however you want to do it, whoever wants to speak. How did this happen? Mm -hmm. Who wants to go first? Well <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of auditions and like trying our hardest and just putting all of our effort into all of the auditions. How did how did you come to audition? You have an agent, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do? First of all, how does a twelve-year-old and an eleven-year-old sister team get an agent? How does that happen? Mm -hmm. 
Where mom, did this agency really? come from? <laughs> Our mom set us up. Your mom did. Okay, so your mom's got, she's connected a little bit. Yeah? <laughs> so, so when did you, when did you start, where, where is your agent? Is he in Toronto? Is he in LA? Where, where is this? Toronto. In Toronto. Okay, so then when did you start, let's go back even further, uh, Thandika, Ziana, um, when did the acting bug get you girls? How long have you been doing stage stuff? Three years. Three years? Yep. Okay, how did it start? We started with um, Z signed up, like the agent wanted to sign up Z first. And um, I went with them to Toronto to like for her to sign the papers and stuff. Yeah. And the um, agent asked if I wanted to get into acting too. And if I wanted to, you know, be on screen and do the stuff that my sister's going to do. And obviously, and, yes. and obviously you said yes. Yeah. And that was three years ago. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Z, you were only eight years old then. Yep. So you're a veteran. Have you been acting since you were eight? Yep. <laughs> what What was the first thing you did? I did a movie. It was a background movie. Okay. What did What was your What was your part in that movie? What did you do? Do you remember? Shazam. Shazam. That's a very popular movie. <laughs> okay, so so now, Sandika, what what was your first go round in the in the world of entertainment? Mine was also Shazam, and Z was a photo double for one of the actors, and I was just in the background part. Okay, did you? So did did that give you the bug? Did you really like it? Oh yeah. <laughs> what 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 did you what did you like best uh, about it? Because I know when it comes to making movies, there can be a lot of standing around. There can be a lot of time when you're yeah. not when you're not doing anything, and then all of a sudden it's boom. You do something for a couple of minutes, and then you stop again. Did you find that kind of weird? At first, we weren't really used to it. Like we were just like, why are they stopping? Why do they keep? playing it like we were a bit confused but then um after a couple of times then we got used to it and we felt like a lot more comfortable doing it okay so um let's let's move forward now to home alone six uh we'll start with you z what uh what part or what role do you play in home alone six when will we see you in the movie I play tween cousin number two. Ah, so are you both cousins in the movie? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're tween cousin number two. Yeah. All right, how many, do you, do you get do you get scenes and walk on words and stuff like that? Is it a um, speaking part? No, I don't have any speaking parts. Okay, so then, Sandy, who, would, would that make you between cousin number one? Yep. <laughs> okay, I guessed right. So, <laughs> so, so do you do you have any do you have any words any speaking parts in the film at all? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, you do, uh, you're not sure what le what ended up on the cutting room floor, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how how do your friends uh, treat? You, you guys are, you guys in your neighborhood are stars. I mean, how, uh, how, 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 how is it, has this affected your lives at all? Uh, no, not You can not tell really, me, we're alone here. <laughs> Pardon? A little bit, like, um, people, whenever they find out that we're in movies and stuff, they're always like, oh, then we better start asking for your autograph now. <laughs> and <laughs> just, um, they make silly jokes and stuff like that. And we're pretty much just treated the same as every other person. So, uh, now this film was, if I'm not mistaken, was shot in Montreal, am I correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, did you uh, you had to go to Montreal to do your part? Yeah. Yeah. What what was that like? It was actually pretty cool because before this we've never like we've never been any like we've never been to Montreal, yeah. so um, it was really cool to explore a little bit when we were off and see what it's like in Montreal. How long did it How long did it take you to to do your part for the film? Um, we had to go to Montreal three times, but it took one week each time. Okay. So it took for for when we see you in the movie, uh, it took you about three weeks plus travel time, to to do that, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And you liked it. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, you're two very young girls with your futures wide open ahead of you. All kinds of schooling and opportunities. Um, do you think you want to do more of this stuff, or is it? just a hobby for you. Do you want to be stars, I guess, is what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah? You really... Yeah. Now, let me ask you this question. This is sort of a... This is sort of a big-time question for, uh, for young girls. Um, when, you were on, when you were on a movie set, there are all kinds of things going on all kinds of people running around and doing different things and it, it it's a little crazy isn't it yeah yeah now how were you treated while you were on the movie set by the movie people and the folks that you were working for and everything did uh, did everybody treat you well were they did they look after you oh yeah yeah they were super nice and they got everything that we needed Great. Well, that's nice to hear because, you know, you hear all kinds of stories about uh, um, what happens behind the scenes, and sometimes they're not good. And I'm, uh, I, I wanted to ask you that. So, and I'm sure your mom and dad or your mom went with you to make sure that you were looked after, right? Oh yeah. 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 But it's nice to hear that the people, uh, the people were good to you. That's that's awesome. So, mm -hmm. let me try to nail this down so we can watch for you when the movie when the movie comes out. How many scenes are you in? Or is it like one scene, two scenes, or do you know yet? Um, about three to four scenes. Three to four scenes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's terrific. So any, <laughs> any, any idea how long we have to watch the movie until we see you guys show up? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> okay, have you seen the whole movie yet? Nope. No. No. Are you gonna go? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're, you're gonna go, Lee. Nobody goes anymore. To the oh, of course. Oh, you're not gonna watch it at home on TV. You, you got to have a red carpet thing. Oh, that's or... what I was gonna ask. Yeah, you guys having a watching party on Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Where's that gonna be? At your house? At home. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have a red carpet at the door and everything? <laughs> no? Possibly. I hope so. I hope so. Um, well, that's just, uh, that's, I'm glad your experience was a good one, uh, and um, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for wanting to come on here and, oh, and oh, talk Lee, to Lee, us. Don't get rid of the girls yet. i got another question. Well, Ma go for it. Maybe we can ask. Yeah. Um, I, what did, what did I forget? Uh, well, you know, movies, they filmed this in Montreal, you know, and it's, it's coming out on Friday. So uh, what's, what's next for you girls? Do you, oh, yes, that's a good question. Do you have anything lined up? Have you already filmed something that's maybe coming out in 2022? They already told me they were going to be stars. So. I know. <laughs> um, I've got um, a couple of shows and, like, movies and stuff and short films that are coming out soon, um, which I'm really excited about. And I have some commercials that will be coming out soon, too. Wow. I, okay. I, look, I look at you, Z, and I think that already you should be like in a toothpaste commercial. Because that's a, that's a <laughs> golden smile. smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm buying whatever toothpaste you're using. <laughs> okay. So um, you're, you're not going to tell us the names of those commercials or, or, or then the name of, uh, name of those shows. You can't do that yet? No, we yeah. can't yet. <laughs> and... You're, you're, uh, you sign oaths of secrecy, right? <laughs> what, uh, what does it feel like for you girls when you see a commercial or something that you've been a part of come on TV or come on a screen? And has that ever happened when you've been with your friends? 
Yes. yes. <laughs> like, um, a few things that Z's been in. I've been watching, like, a movie or a show with my friends, and all of a sudden a commercial comes on, and I'm like, that's my sister. <laughs> and, like, we didn't know that it was going to come on that day, so I'm texting my mom and my parents and all my friends that my sister is on TV right now. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and do they believe you? Yes, most, okay. most of the time. <laughs> That is, uh, that now, okay, so, as I was mentioning before, I had another question pop into my head. Obviously, you two young ladies are doing something that most um, children your age don't have an opportunity to do. Um, how does it affect your regular life? Like, you've got schoolwork to do, and, and regular lives to to, to plan for and futures to think about beyond the entertainment world. Hopefully, that all works out for you. But um, does it does it does it feel a little complicated for you, or or is the regular schoolwork and uh, and, and future discussions with your parents and all this stuff is it is it just normal for you? Mostly, it's pretty normal, and sometimes like. Um, cause we have tutors on set and stuff like that. Right. And sometimes it's nice to know like that we have an opportunity that most people don't. And it's something that like we should really like work our hardest on. That's a nice attitude, but uh, uh, your your plans are still to complete your schooling, I take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I know you're really young, and I always, I, I never liked it when people asked me this when I was your age. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? You know, uh, was was always the question that they would ask. Outside, outside the acting industry, outside the entertainment business, uh, do you have other interests that you would like to pursue as you get older or as you uh, continue your education? Any other things you'd, if you weren't acting, what what would you like to do? Um, if I wasn't acting, then I would probably want to like have a job to do with pets because I love animals. Okay, very very and, honorable pursuit, Thandika. What do you think? Um, for me, if I wasn't like in the acting, um, I'd want to study law and like try and become a lawyer. Because I just love, um, like, me and my friends like to go online and solve crime cases that haven't been solved mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's really fun. Well, whatever pursuits you two decide, I'm sure you'll be successful. Um, and, I, and I know you've got uh, great support behind the scenes. So kudos to your mom and your support network there as well. Because I know they're, they're pushing you uh, to be your best and, and have all your best interests at heart so kudos to them behind the scenes and behind the camera today too um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zianna, Thadika, um we're so proud of you and, uh, and and I know so is your family and please stay in touch with us we'll be following you as best we can I'll be watching for you in the movie Home Alone 6 <laughs> Although I still don't know how people can leave their kid home alone six times at Christmas time, but I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Uh, but we're so pleased to have met you both here today. Thank you for taking time to be here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, girls. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, jeez. You're right, Kevin. It did lift me up. It made my day. Great, great kids. Absolutely. Yes. And I'm, I'm glad that they're finding success and finding um, finding uh, freedom and happiness in a pursuit that's really cool at that age. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I want their agent. I, whoever you are, <laughs> uh, it seems like they really have people that are looking after them, which is great. Yeah, I, I don't know, Lee, that you're perfect for the role of a tween cousin. No, I'd I'd probably pay one of the I'd probably play one of the the, the intruders. Oh yeah, probably you, one of yeah, the criminals. You'd be good. I You're right. Do, yeah, I could do good. At, do well at that. Yeah, you would do well at that. All right. Hey, coming. I up, can uh, fall downstairs with the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> coming up at the end of the show, we're going to be featuring the uh, the new musical anthem. Yeah. For the Niagara 2022 Summer Games. 
Right. That's going to be cool for our musical guest. I will be very interested uh, in any feedback, by the way, that we get for this. Uh, Steel Heart is the name of the song. Uh, it's by Posey. Now, is that the name of the young lady or is that the name of the whole group? Uh, it's the name of the young lady. Okay. She, uh, I, I believe she has her roots in the GTA. She was featured on, I think, The Launch, which was a show on like CTV. Okay. And that kind of kick-started her career. I did find it maybe odd that it wasn't a Niagara artist. Um, but for all I know, maybe Posey has ties to the Niagara region. You know, sometimes yeah. artists, once they get to the GTA, they, they call themselves Toronto-based right. musicians. But the reality is th- they live and breathe down here in Niagara. So, yeah. so I don't want to say that she's not. And I've heard, I, I, I've heard a bit bit and piece of it so good song nice nicely done video and etc but it is the official anthem of the 2022 summer games that are being held here in uh, in niagara so uh, that's what we're going to be played off the stage by today when we sign off the program and um, if you can hang around and watch the video listen to the song and give us some feedback about that, I'd be, I'd be interested uh, in in how you think. I don't know whether it's anthemic or not, but again, I haven't I haven't watched the whole thing beginning to end, which I will do at the end of the program. But um, we'll see what uh, we'll see how it goes. Hey, at least we have a 2022 Summer Games to have an anthem for. No, absolutely, that's good. And uh, Lee, last week on the program, uh, one of the one of the fans of the show, David Burroughs, joined us from Sarnia. And we were talking about the $15 minimum wage and the elimination of the second wow. tier for servers. Yes. And boy, oh boy, were there comments and conversations about that. It was probably the highest viewed segment of last week's show was the discussion about how tipping will or will not or should or should not change based on the upcoming increase of the minimum wage to $15 an hour when that happens at the beginning of January and that includes servers and bartenders and kitchen staff etc in restaurants uh, and people otherwise involved in the service industry. Without question as Kevin said the largest commented on and viewed segment of our show last week was about that. It's, it's something that people feel very strongly about. It is. Now, uh, we also put up another segment where we were talking about Good Samaritans. And um, Nick oh, can is, we do the, yeah. Yeah, Nick's getting a lot of these emails in, and they're great, and everybody finds them heartwarming. And I wish yes. we, could, we could hear, like, almost I want one or two of these daily. This is, this kind of tugged at my heartstrings. I, I mean, Z, a young lady, was just talking about the fact that she loves animals, and so many of us do. So... On this past Saturday, about 11.30 at night, a husky named Kai had escaped these people's backyard. have no idea where Kai ran to, but they're so thankful that a stranger caught him, put a red leash on him. This gentleman drove a white SUV, came to our neighborhood. He returned him to one of our neighbors, who also has a husky, and she instantly knew it was mine. Kai still has your leash, and that was the picture that we showed. And he would like to return it to you and thank you with a small gift. If this was you, please contact me. We are so thankful for your time and kindness. And there's the red leash. Oh, he's a good pupper. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? <laughs> <laughs> Who's a good boy? <laughs> but the guy left his leash. I mean, he didn't just leave the dog. He gave them his leash so that they could walk him home. Now, Kai could be a girl. Sorry, who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? I don't think Kai's giving that leash back. No. That's a a smile on Isn't that a beautiful... Isn't that... uh, uh, Here's your leash, pal. Thank you very much for saving me. (laughs) Isn't that great? Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So... I want to take this moment to, to once again remind you that this has been a special Wednesday edition of Niagara 411 Live with Lee Sterry. That would be me. We are powered by WeStream. That would be Kevin and Brandon Scram, um, Canada's premier live streaming company. And the reason we're doing this on Wednesday is uh, because of the very busy day that the WeStream people have bringing Remembrance Day 
uh, ceremonies to you across Niagara. So um, they will be available on Niagara 411. You can search uh, WeStream on uh, Facebook as well. And uh, Kevin, whatever other platforms uh, we can access you on, right? Yeah, pretty much all over the place. But uh, WeStream on Facebook, you'll find a wide variety and collection of some of the projects that we've been involved with. Uh, over the yeah, years, yeah. So, uh, and it's W E E S T R E E M. Yeah, it's right? right there. It's in the post. If right anybody there. wanted to click on it, it's it's yeah, hyperlinked right there, right there in the right. post. And always funny when you see people carrying mannequins out of stores. And if you look over your shoulder there, you see that that girl's ah. putting a mannequin into the into the back seat of that mini. <laughs> Headless, armless. It's just limbless, basically. It's a torso. It uh, appears to be a female torso, and she's just chucking. That's not how. That's no way to treat. In the next in the next week or so, uh, I'm going to invite a gentleman on the program. Uh, you reminded me. Uh, his name is Mitch Markowitz. He is the co-creator as well as the a co-star uh, of a historic Niagara um, TV show that was on in 1971. 103 episodes aired on CHCH television called The Hilarious House of Frankenstein. And uh, starring Canadian comic actor extraordinaire Billy Van, Mitch Markowitz and his brother uh, have a, uh, con conceived uh, of this program, created this program. And the reason I mention it now is uh, he is a great collector of memorabilia and just crazy stuff. His house is just like a museum. He has all the, he has so many mannequins all dressed up like you walk through his house and I swear to God, it, it scares the, the, the dickens out of you because you think you're meeting somebody and it's a mannequin in the middle of the living room. It's like, uh, out of nowhere. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's kind of funny. This is the show, right? That is it. The Hilarious House of Fright and Son. Uh, Mitch doesn't even know I'm talking about this. But uh, it aired in 1971. It was created by uh, Mitch and his brother, Mitch Markowitz and his brother. For the next 25 years, it has aired across Canada and parts of the United States. During its run, the show touched and influenced many, many people, including... Moi, uh, I am honored, by the way, to have a little piece uh, on a CD of the radio version of the show that was produced a year ago, um, and uh, it's just. Uh, and this is the fan club. Are you part of the fan club? I am. Okay, good. If not, you, you got to get in here. These are your people. Yeah, yeah. No, I am. Let's see if there's any videos in here. Yeah, um, they're all available on uh, on YouTube, etc. But we'll find out more about that. I'll I'll get a hold of. Uh, I've been promising to do this. This is the 50 year, being 2021, this is the 50 year anniversary year. There's Billy Van uh, as the Count. Gosh, yeah, I remember all these images. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and again, uh, Mitch can tell us more, but uh, he was in discussions with all the folks in uh, L.A., which are releasing it down there as a, as a series as well. And just, just uh, Vincent Price. That's Billy Van in one character, Griselda. Vincent Price was the one of the big glasses. Uh, there he is there again. He was the host of the program. And Vincent Price was involved in this? He was the host of the program. The Vincent Price? He introduced the program. The Vincent Price. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Is Vincent Price not also the guy that does the voice on Thriller for Michael Jackson? Yes. That guy? That guy. Vincent was Price. plying his trade in Hamilton? Yes, and I am not going to tell you, that I know the story about how he became to be, how he came to be the host of that uh, right show. Here. Oh yeah, that's the Vincent Price. So I'll back it up here because... ...blood to terrorize your neighborhood. And whosoever shall be found without the soul for getting okay. down... To stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell. The foulest stench is in the air, the funk of 40,000 years. And grizzled ghouls from every tomb are closing in to seal your doom. And though you <laughs> yeah, might so stay alive, there is a, so cool. there is a wonderful shiver, story, and no I am not going to spill the beat of, of how he became. That crazy. famous laugh. How he became... That's crazy. Yeah. The, the introducer, if you will, or the host 
of the hilarious House of Frightenstein that aired on CHCH in 1971. Fabulous story of how that happened. I'll let Mitch tell you. And Mitch, I'm sorry to out you like this, but I will contact you if, if you have anything to do with watching this program, and I know he does from time to time. Um, we'll, we'll line up. Maybe next week, maybe the week after, whenever he's available. He's a busy guy still these days, but uh, we'll let him tell you that story. So that should be that should be fun. We'll, we'll give you a heads up when he's coming on. So Kevin, uh, again, Gales Gas Bars, thank you for fueling this program as you have fueled Niagara for the last 50 plus years and will continue to do so and we thank you for your support. Carlos Zucchini, uh, Performance Heating and Air, saving your family money here in Niagara on HVAC needs and supplies because they have families in Niagara Hold on there, I too. Go get the camera. Verge Insurance Group, thank you very much for you as well, supporting us, uh, Mark and Blake Shirk and, and your group, uh, another company that is uh, born and bred and lives to serve Niagara. We would like to thank once again the two lovely young ladies that came on the program today, Thandika and Zianda. You can watch for them in Home Alone 6, their uh, Niagara Falls residence. Uh, 12 years old and, uh, and 11 years old, respectively. And uh, they'll be in theaters come Friday. Or on your Disney Channel or wherever, you know, wherever you find your, your favorite current-run Disney films, that's where you will find these two young ladies. And uh, just a pleasure to have them on the program. Uh, Phil Gladman, thank you for uh, clicking on the program today. We didn't expect to have you, but it's always a pleasure when somebody comes in uh, to talk about what's happening in their community. And Phil came in to talk to us about uh, Welland and what's happening uh, at Tailgates. Uh, we were hoping to have the proprietor on from Tailgates in Welland today, but uh, due to his legal consultations, um, didn't want to say anything at this point in time. I too bad, bad because... I feel, I feel bad for people that get that advice from lawyers. I do too. Let's tell the truth. Just tell the Lawyers are just doing that to protect their own hiney. What? Tell your own story. There's nothing wrong with telling How your own story. How could I possibly story? damage my legal position by... By telling the truth. By telling the truth. This is what I'm going to tell everybody. My story's not changing. I'll, I'll continue to tell you the truth. Well, if I'm the lawyer, I might not be earning my money if I tell you to say nothing. What happens when you say nothing? Nothing. Nothing. And we need something to happen. Yeah. Say something, and something will happen. We've got to get back in there. Yeah. It's an institution. They help out so uh, so many different uh, not-for-profits, community events across Welland, that to have this happen to them because of a dispute with the landlord may very well kill his business, even if he gets back in there in two or three weeks. We would like to thank you all for watching the program. You support us uh, as always, and like we were alluding to uh, earlier, this program is very well received around Niagara. It's highly viewed. Uh, our reach is uh, uh, terrific beyond uh, our wildest uh, dreams, so we're so pleased that that is the case. Kevin Jack, always a pleasure to work with you, my friend of uh, WeStream. Uh, kudos to your partner, uh, Brandon Scram, as well. I hope you gentlemen ha have a successful, I'm sure you will, day streaming the ceremonies and the Remembrance Day um, uh, shows uh, from all around Niagara tomorrow. And I guess all we can say now is you're going to see and hear Steel Heart by Posey, which is the 2022 Summer Games official anthem for, uh, for that event here in uh, Niagara. So uh, up to you, uh, enjoy or not. Uh, it's been our pleasure. My name's Lee Sterry, and we'll do it all again in, uh, well, I guess eight days next Thursday. Thanks. Quiet hearts don't create heroes. I try.
It's inside of me.